Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with a simple International Space Station resupply mission, and so we first move off the old container that contained food, water, and oxygen that is now depleted, and we will send a new container of similar size up, hopefully so that we don't have to pay attention to the ISS for an extended period of time. So here goes the old container, deorbiting itself. And once that's safely away, we launch a new one on a new Glen. And for lower afforded purposes, New Glen is just fine. We don't need to supply the ISS that much ahead of time. Sending like 100 tons, we'll never see the people on the ISS ever again, basically. So, yeah, uh, best not to try and overdo that. And so, New Glen's capacity is just fine. And I think there was an imbalance between methane and oxygen in the core there, and so that's what I was checking up on. I didn't reserve any fuel for its barge landing or anything like that. I did make use of it in expendable mode. Though, as a result, I think we had quite a bit left in the upper stage, though we used it for rendezvous purposes before deorbiting it. And then this was left on its own. It had enough internal fuel to do the entire rendezvous on its own, but having the big engines do it helps. This is a nice sort of rendezvous we're doing here. One of the more cinematic approaches that we've done to the ISS. Especially with this retro burn here. And stopping. Yep, just wanted to sort of capture that. But anyway, it proceeds to do its docking in the same slot that the other one vacated. And there we go. All right, so that's done. I decided to send some supplies over to the moon now. And this is on a Kasei rocket with four Sajita boosters, as you can see. This being a sandbox series, and we don't have to worry about funding or anything like that that you would have to worry about in career mode, the main struggle is keeping everybody supplied with food, water, and oxygen. And I haven't been particularly satisfied with any solution as far as in situ resource utilization or base building like that when it comes to realism overhaul. Uh, there is a lot of surface glitchiness on realism overhaul. Like I've deployed ISR units to the moon for instance and when I turn back to them they just explode. And the big struggle is the heating issue and the boil off issue. So a lot of times when I go to the ISR units, they have, you know, the heating and the radiators and everything, but over time the math just doesn't work out and so they overheat. And, you know, you've seen that with stock drilling units. It seems to be worse with realism overhaul, especially over time scales that I'm normally away from them and not paying attention. So that's been a struggle. And then just the general boil off issue on the in situ resource utilization units, the little drill units that drill for water and turn it into hydrogen and oxygen, they never seem to be able to generate enough of the hydrogen and oxygen to replenish themselves despite boil off, basically. And keeping them happy like that has been a trick, uh, especially since they often have to run with nuclear reactors, so small nuclear reactors, but still nuclear reactors. So despite the fact that I can literally make whatever part I need, I haven't come up with a good solution for that yet. So here the supply vessel is docking, so Lunar Gateway is happy. And now I decided that I would try and send some supplies over to Mars, but I added a nuclear engine, an RD-0410, on that. The RD-0410 I've previously used on the pair which is a vehicle that we used for transfers between Moon and Earth. And so this is launching out with the supplies with the hydrogen on it for the nuclear engine as well. And we will see how it goes. It also has a hypergolic system. Those were four AJ-10190s, I believe. And so once again with the Kasei rocket, which you'll be seeing a lot of, I decided that we would no longer go with the crazier rockets that we were using, for instance, the 
Aerospike SSTO or Monument, though occasionally I might get a hankering for using those for the heck of it. Uh, it is a live stream and they are amusing. But uh, mostly it'll be Kasei Rocket and we'll focus on payloads. And so here we've sort of got a lopsided orbit, but we make it. And then it makes a transfer, but actually the upper stage can only do part of the transfer. The payload itself has to do the rest. It turns out that 75... I, it should have been possible. The Kasei rocket has a fairly high capacity to Mars, but um, apparently not that high. So it needed some of the payload to do some of the work. And then we will have to, of course, do some corrections along the way to Mars. Uh, it's looking a little bit tight, we'll see. I don't know, I think I have shut down the hypergolic system though, but there isn't a whole lot of hypergolic fuel left, so we'll see if that mission actually manages to make it with the Delta V that it has. So anyway, it will have a course to Mars. The question is whether it can capture, because it sure isn't capturing with heat shields. Speaking of heat shields, we have this little thing. Uh, for some reason, during the live stream, I decided to find out how close we could get to the sun without something exploding. This is not in the regular timeline of the solar system tourism save. I forget whether this was just reverted or whether it was in a completely different save, but either way, this is not actually happening. Uh, and that's mainly because we're going to have to send it out to Jupiter and get Jupiter's help to bring our orbit down into the sun. So we are launching it on SLS in order to give us a whole lot of capacity to do this. And use for separation. I don't know why I didn't decide to use Kasei rocket for this, but uh, maybe it was interesting to see if, uh, if SLS was capable of it. And there's SLS Block 1B with the EUS there. And right after making orbit, I don't think we actually make a proper orbit. We go straight into the trajectory on our way to Jupiter. And here we have that plotted. It's taking basically what the EUS can provide. And I just time warp all the way out and do the thing as a little experiment. So here we are flying by Jupiter. And we stay pretty far away from Jupiter because we don't really need that much help. I guess. I forget why. The, it, the way it was plotted, it just made sense this way. We do use a lot of fuel to make sure that we're going into the sun very decisively at this juncture. And it ultimately is something like a two-ton vessel heading into the sun. So there, there we go. We have the negative periapsis, so we're definitely heading into it. Warning, there's going to be a bright light soon. And it's gonna get brighter than this. But then as we get really close, it sort of just becomes a little sphere without the halo and everything. So there's us getting closer. And occasionally if we deviated a little bit from our trajectory, it overheated, it had a little overheating indication, but then it'd stop. But yeah, really bright, really bright, really fast, 138,000 meters per second. We still have some Delta V if we wanted to use it, but I don't think there's any point. And there's a little overheating. Occasionally we got that and had to stop and adjust a little bit. And I don't know why I wanted to go radial here. Maybe it was because it was sort of def uh, with the surface negative, it was deflecting or yeah, but that wasn't a great plan. It went a little bit iffy. Well, I mean, it's not overheating and exploding just yet. Oh, no, wait. Uh, I think that was a solar panel. That was one of the panels. We also have an RTG there because, of course, as we approach the sun, we can't use the solar panels, right? Um, they will explode. We're going heat shield first and we're using the RTG for power. And we're seeing how close we can get. We are at 325,000 meters per second and increasing. That seems to be 1.6 million kilometers. And, well, that's basically it. 1.6 million kilometers was as close as we could get, which is not great. I mean, 
Now, maybe if we had pulled down our apoapsis a bit so that we were going slower, it would have been better, but... The, the heat shield's still there. Well, not for long, though. Uh, for some reason, it went into a slower orbit. You can see it's much slower than the probe had been. Uh, so it got slowed down into a lower period, but it died anyway. Anyway, that was the end of one stream. This is the next stream. And so that was how we concluded with a bang that stream. And now this is perhaps saner. We are just trying to resupply the hide vessel, which had previously brought some crew back from Mars. And we want to send it out to Mars again to grab some more people back from Mars. So this is going to refuel it, resupply it. So that's food, water, oxygen, uh, and hydrogen and xenon gas because it's a hydrogen uh, ion engine combination, NTP ion engine combination. So once again, the Cassidy rocket, very reliable. And there goes the core. Oh, wait, we release the fairings and then release the core. All right. And then we have a big rendezvous to do. The hide is still in a very high orbit. And so I decided to continue burning after we passed reaching orbit in order to get to the hide's periapsis, which was high. And I also went to the hide and had it use its ion engines to bring down its orbit so that it's more manageable and makes it easier to get a rendezvous. And so we've got that. And so here we are high above the Earth and doing the rendezvous with this resupply vessel with the huge ED9V engine. And here's ultimately the rendezvous. No big fuss really, though fairly large vessel. It's not the largest I've ever docked or anything like that. This is fairly tame. And we are resupplying and of course we move the refueler out. So it will deorbit and the hide is ready to go, in theory, in theory. And so I plot a path to Mars from its current orbit, which is still a high orbit. And that's in 37 days, which I decide we could probably just time warp to. So I do, I go to the tracking station, time warp, and we go back to it and see how things are. And when I turn back to it, all the hydrogen is gone. Zero hydrogen. It was full just a second ago. We had topped it off and there was no hydrogen left. Welcome to Boiloff in my world. Um, I don't know, sometimes it'll be there, sometimes not. Anyway, I uh, tried to add the hydrogen via save file editing that didn't work either. So it was very resolute in not having any hydrogen. So I decided to do the burn with the ion engines, as tedious as that was, and it is on its way out back to Mars. Speaking of Mars, here is a little supply probe that is capturing around Mars with very dramatic music. It is just uh, aero capture. I forget if this had been a wayward one that uh, we got back on track. It's possible. No, one that had missed its Mars encounter once and we were trying to get it back on track and made a mid-course adjustment in order to do that. And Because otherwise we don't have anything coming in exactly the right time. So the aero capture didn't quite work out, we weren't low enough, so I had to use the RCS in order to capture. The engines wouldn't work because I wanted to keep the heat shield, otherwise it'd never get to Phobos, which is where it's going. And so, yep, yeah, we managed to capture with the RCS, and we stabilized its orbit at Apoapsis, and then we turned back to this vessel, which we had more recently launched, in order to try to get it to Mars. It's doing a correction burn, but Again, the Delta V is really tight here. I try my best to optimize uh, mid-course adjustments so that we don't have to spend so much, but uh, it, is, it doesn't seem like there's an easy way for it to capture around Mars right now, given the Delta V that it has. Now, for this little vessel, we continue to do aero braking passes because it doesn't have much fuel either and it needs to get over to Phobos Station with its supplies. And so we try to do our best to Make that easier though it got imbalanced because it had too much fuel at the top and not enough close to the heat shield side i rebalance it but not in time but no problem as far as heat is concerned because we were just doing high passes in mars's atmosphere and it did not blow up so it'll be okay for now this is a supply vessel for uranus 
all the way out on Uranus. Our Uranus venturer, Miko Gagozov, is still on his way. But we of course sent some supplies behind him in order to get to him once he arrives so that he would have more for the return home. So that vessel is capturing around Venus soon. It hasn't done the capture burn yet. We just made some adjustments and made sure it could with, and it can with quite a lot of Delta V to spare. And this thing continues to make error breaking passes, this time properly controlled and getting closer to Phobos orbit, but not quite. And it's not gonna be easy for it to actually get to Phobos with the Delta V that it has, but I tried. Next up, we actually reached a series window, and we don't have any Kerbals who wanted to go to series just yet, but I decided to send some supplies over just in case there was anybody interested, so it'll just be waiting there for them, and launch them on the Kasei rocket. I mean, how often do series windows occur? Uh, not that often, so we might as well make use of it. So off it goes. We use Kasei instead of SLS even though both systems are equally expendable uh, because it has a higher capacity and the main reason for that is even though it's actually lighter on the pad, uh, most of that mass is devoted to higher ISP engines as opposed to SLS where most of the mass is devoted to the SRVs which do not have very good efficiency. So the higher efficiency means that we can carry more payload even though we weigh less. So we don't quite make orbit here. I was running out of time and we are sort of, we have a negative periapsis, but I plotted it so that we could burn straight out and we'll see if I remember to do that in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.